right. Hello, everybody. We are back in the studio once again with Life Lessons Live with the crew. And uh, we are excited to be on today. We got Justin, we got Jasper, Nicole, and Stephanie in the studio with us. And we're going to be continuing our conversation on creating wholesome environments. Back to the basics. And uh, you know here, there's no judge, there's no judgment zone. We're not being judgmental or critical. And you know, we believe that conversations birth new season. We want you to join in the conversation, amen, by commenting on the Facebook page uh, on GP Ministries. And we see your, your comments live. We will put them on the screen and we want to converse with you. So uh, please, please feel free to comment. And again, we're just here to share some wisdom we're here to share some love and um, our testimonies and things of that nature so that we all can have amazing lives, our children and our children's children. And again, uh, we've been talking about society and, you know, people make up society and we've got to create wholesome environments. Mm -hmm. So we're going to join in. We're going to talk. But I want these guys to introduce themselves to you uh, a little bit so you know who, who you are listening to. Amen. So, Jasper, uh, this is your first time on with us. And uh, so please introduce yourself and let them know who you are. OK. Hello, everyone. My name is Jasper Nicole. I am 30 years old from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I am a mother of two. Um, Maya and Eli, they're at, of ages 14 and 7. Um, I am a worship leader at my uh, church, the Pursuit of God Transformation Center. I am yeah. also the youth director uh, there for Pulse. Um, and I am so excited and elated to be here. Thank you so much for asking me to join tonight. It's my pleasure. Amen. Justin. What's going on, everyone? My name is Justin Crosby uh, from Aberdeen, Mississippi. And uh, just as the man of God said in his word, I'm just one crying out in the wilderness. Happy to be here. <laughs> amen. Amen. And how's the little princess doing, man? Let me tell you something. So she's 19 months as of the first. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I just life changing every, every single day, you know, is life changing. And, and I, I, I wouldn't give her back. But uh, oh, I'll, I'm prepared to, to know what to pray for, for the next one. <laughs> okay. Amen. 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 Stephanie? Hey, world. Uh, Stephanie Monique here, right here in Tupelo, Mississippi. Um, educator, entrepreneur, and mentor, and just a lifelong learner and worshiper. Amen. Amen. Go. And so many other things. Uh, we just thank God for Stephanie's life. She assists us in so much. We couldn't do what we do without her help. Amen. And just glad about all of these guys. Me and Justin, we were down in Tupelo just getting our hair cut uh, the other day, man. And and whenever, you know, you get together with quality people, quality conversations begin to happen. Come and on, um, that's what we're doing right. here. And man, I just want to tell you, every time I'm in your presence, man, I enjoy uh, who you are. Uh, and again, I say this is who he is. This isn't just him talking a bunch of fluff. This is who he is. This is Amen. this is what's engraved in him. This is what he believes. These are his convictions, and it shows. And uh, I appreciate your life very much, Jazz. Uh, can't say too much about you. I mean, you just uh, she's an LCU student, and um, mm -hmm. and there again, she's a worship leader. Their pursuit of God. And last night we were in class, and she was uh, assisting him, and she was just sharing um, her testimony. We've been talking about. Uh, character you know as we're talking about society and 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 people wanting to socialize but not being socially healthy mm. and it begins uh creating mm. wholesome environments and you know we got to start in the home and so last night jazz was in class with us and she was just sharing uh as a mother how she how she's adopted these things and and she can share some of her testimony with you but when I was hearing this and I said, I've got to have her on there because Justin, what she's doing is exactly the thing that we've been talking about. You know, where there's no vision, amen, people perish. Man. And we can see that society is going in some ways. And so we got to not be ashamed of the gospel. We got to not be ashamed of who Christ is, his principles, amen, the word of God, uh, his being saved, being Holy Ghost filled, 
all the same. Those are the things that we are in need of so that we can have the character we need to walk in and make sure that we're duplicating that in our children and throughout our families and friends and coworkers and all of those things. And so uh, we also, where there's vision, there's goals and there's strategies. And, and the word of God gives us the, 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 the standards in which we should live by. It gives us a perfect picture of love, gives us the perfect picture of how we ought to uh, raise our children, how we ought to behave towards one another, praise God, and how we ought to behave towards God. And so when we start talking about love, loving God is for us, but loving one another is for him. And that's how we create wholesome environments. We got to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Um, and, and when we do that, we'll make the sacrifice. We'll do the things that we need to do in order to have wholesome environments. OK. And, and so, as I said last night, we just was just talking as we, we are actually in a class called Christ Like Character. And she was sharing about um, some things you do with the children. And so, Jazz, just share a little bit. And we you don't have to tell it all. But uh, we talked about parenting. If we're going to create wholesome environment, yes. it's going to begin in the home. That's and good. We Absolutely. We've gotten away from parenting. Okay. And tell us, Jazz, you shared this last night, what your grandmother said to you. <laughs> um, she she has a quote that she said since I was a little girl, she said, uh, you can tell who was trained and who was raised. And a lot right. of parents now <laughs> are raising their children. They're not training their children. They're just seeing them to 18, sending them off to college and then turning their room into the office. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> Doesn't that sound familiar, guys? Come on, mother. Come on, mother. <laughs> Doesn't that sound familiar? You know, and, and just, you know, you you guys are in your early 30s, late 30s. I'm in my late 50s. I don't believe there's a generation gap. The Bible says that God's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. These principles yes, that sir. worked in the past are going to work in the future. Mm -hmm. because they're the right way of doing things right. and uh we can't conform to the world we can't lose the standards if we're going to create wholesome environments uh one of the things that i was impressed with is um jazz was sharing with how every day when our kids come home uh they have homework to do but they have bible study right jazz tell us right. a little bit about that um, so uh, a while back ago, um, or really kind of when I started in, in LCU, I noticed how my kids would eavesdrop. They would constantly walk in the living room and just kind of hear what was going on, listen to what was happening. And I said, you know, when I was growing good, we did the same thing in my home. You know, we spent a lot of time at church. Um, I, we've always been servants in the kingdom, um, but we also had to proficiently recall Bible verses as kids. Mm -hmm. And those things were embedded in us. And I just look at our generation now and it convicted me because I too was one of those parents who was raising my, ch my children and I wasn't training them. And mm. I had expectations of my kids that they were never taught to uphold. So how could they be something that they've never been trained to be? And so um, I started something called Bible. And so my, my, and I, I do it in layman terms. So it's, uh, it's, it's understandable for my seven-year-old as well as my 14-year-old. Um, and so, you know, right now we're learning uh, identity, who we are. So Genesis 126 is what they're learning and what they're studying. And, you know, when I ask them those questions of, you know, if God says that, you're created in his image and in his likeness. What does that mean to you? You Come know, and of course, my dialogue with my daughter, who's the 14 year old, it's a little bit deeper than it is with Eli, who is my seven year old. <laughs> but he understands it because he already walks in the character of Christ. Oh, yeah. And so we do that every day. And we know and he knows that before he gets on the game before his computer, his homework. Then we do our homework, get that out the way. We get a snack and then we come back together for a Bible and we just talk. A lot of parents, what I've realized in this generation, they don't talk to their children. Mm. 
Mm. They dictate their children, but they don't talk to their children. They tell them what to do. They tell them where they're going, what they need to be doing, their chores and all of that. But they do not have dialogue with their children. And I think this generation as a mentor of this generation and the, the older teenagers of this generation, I've noticed that that is what's missing in their maturation process. A lot of people are just not dialoguing with children anymore. So we just tell them what we want them to know. We tell them what we want them to hear. We tell them what to do, but we don't tell them how to do it. And we don't give them the proper application to fulfill whatever assignment is actually on their life. Mm -hmm. And so we do that every day. We do Bible and me and my kids, we they, they enjoy it, you know, and they look forward to it every day. That's excellent. That's excellent. So that's what we've been sharing because without vision, we said to people perish and then we got to have goals. What's the standard God has put before us? And then we got to have a strategy. So that's a parenting strategy to assure that your children know who they are because we know uh, when there's an identity crisis, people are danger to themselves and to everyone around them. Yes, sir. And many times that's what people are dealing with. And it's happening, I mean, just rampantly here out in society today. And so uh, we thank God for Keisha Wright and Crystal Jones. Uh, they are on and they're listening. And and please, guys, comment, ask questions. We see you live and uh, let us know what you're doing. Just put put a little put a little something on that, what you just heard Jasper talking about. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> well, I'll say this, and, and it's a pleasure just, just listening to you and, and hearing you. Uh, I let you know that someone made an indelible impression in your life. And I think that is what's missing is and I love the word you use dictate. Right. That, that we that we raise and not train um, a phrase that I've used a lot uh, when you said that is uh, people dictate when they can't exemplify. Ooh. So when I when I can't be the example, that's so good. I tell you to be it. When 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 I can't do it, I use my age or my status. I, I'm your mama. Hence, uh, in, in layman's terms, do what I say, mm -hmm. not what I do. What I, what I'm really admitting to you is I can't do it, but I have authority over you, so I'm gonna tell you to do it, but without an example. Come on. You know, uh, again, and I, I love what you're doing. You're setting a generational example for your children that because because what's going to happen is they are going to deal with spiritual issues because they are spiritual people having a human existence. And, and now you're not having to go like a lot of parents and find something to exemplify. You can go to the word of God because it's being buried in them now. So that when they have biblical experiences, they now have reference. And, and so when, when I think about what you're talking about, and, and I, I have my little notes from our, our different conversations, uh, Bishop has been using the word environment. And you know me, I like to go to my dictionary. Mm -hmm. I talk to Webster often. And so mm -hmm. when, you, when you hear environment, uh, it, one of the differences I, I found was uh, an atmosphere of a pervading tone for mm -hmm. a place. And I focus on the word tone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you think of tone, you think of tone setter. So if we're going to talk about the, in, in the environment, we have to talk about the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And who sets the atmosphere? Well, the tone setter. And, and so I went and looked up tone setter. And what does a tone setter do? A, a tone setter determines the quality, the feeling, and the attitude of wherever they are. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about having healthy environments, if we're talking about being in a godly place, then we have got to talk about who are we allowing to set the tone? Because that person who sets the tone, they determine the quality, they determine the feeling, and they determine the attitude of the place. So when we say that we as Christians want to have a, a better environment, a better atmosphere, are we setting the tone? Or are we are we doing, as Sister Jazz just said, are we allowing those of us who have not had example 
to basically be told to do something with no knowledge of how to do it. Because mm -hmm. how can we set the tone if we don't know better? How can we tell our children to obey the Lord for this is right if we're not seeing it? How can we create the environment we're looking for if we don't have the capability of setting the tone for the environment? If anyone can come in and tell us how to act because we don't know what our word says, right? Th then we're lacking in quality. If anyone can come in and get us out of character, then we're lacking in feeling. And so that's why everyone has the attitude of the global body that they do, because I don't think they see enough tone setters, people who are going to establish and set the atmosphere for how we need to conduct ourselves as people of faith. So that when people who are not of our faith come to us, they have to fall in line with the atmosphere. They have to fall in line with the environment because the tone has been set. That's excellent. And, and, and this is this this is a challenge. Um, do we and, and again, I'm throwing this out. Uh, thank God. Uh, Sister Charlotte's with us. She is all she's the advocate for the little people. She is the advocate for the little people. <laughs> and we thank God she's joined us today. Um, but when, when you say that, Justin, uh, do we. And again, we're not being critical or judgmental. We are assessing things. As people of faith, have we set the tone? Are we creating the environments that need to be created? Do, do we have the capacity to do it because we've done what the scripture says? We're hiding the word in our heart that we don't lose who we are. The scripture says sin against God, lose who we are and miss the mark and are we okay with with um uh comparing ourselves to the word or or looking at ourselves through the word of god and not how we feel or my truth or whatever is popular or whatever's going to you know give me uh the the relief that i want the 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 I don't know what I want to do, our own wills in this thing. And this is to anybody. Do we, can we be honest as born again believers that we might be able to influence those who, who need wholesome environment, but don't know how to get it and how to create those environments? Because that's something that has to be done because we understand we're in the world, but we're not of this world. And you got to create these environments, okay? You might have a house, but it had to become a home. All right. Yes, sir. Amen. And, and you are the one that make it a home. But if you don't have the capacity to make it a home, you don't have the capacity to love, you don't have the wisdom on how to create these environments, and do we know what the standards are, or have we conformed? It's easier to conform than it is to transform and to transform uh, others or transform environments, okay? And so just throwing that out, can we be honest, open and transparent and say, you know what? We're putting in the work. We do know what, what God's standard is. We're not making excuses for his standards, okay? And, and, and we're going to ascribe to becoming who God intended for us to be uh, through uh, what he has afforded us to be able to do what he has said. Do we think we're there? Are we doing that? Are we duplicating that in, in, in the next generation and in our peers? Amen. Amen. Uh Stephanie, <laughs> well, Bishop, I, Gavin Ramsey, God bless you, sir, man. We're looking for your comments. Glory. Hey, Bishop. Um, well, Bishop, I think that I think that it is happening in some areas, and I'm gonna tell you why I think that it is happening. Um, because we have three, well, four YouTube Bishop, but I'm the three. We got three examples here today. I don't have children, um, but I teach adults. Uh, <laughs> but um. And you heard the testimony of Jasper. She said, my grandmother. Come so on. this was a, 
a passed down thing. And it reminded me of Abraham. Abraham taught Isaac and Isaac taught Jacob. Yes. And so that was one of the main reasons why God chose Abraham, because he said, I know that you're going to teach the next generation. Mm -hmm. And then the next generation is going to teach the next generation. And then the next generation is going to teach the next generation. And so you see these examples today. And even Charlotte has talked about how her and her father would have meetings and they would have family um, dialogue, as Jasper said, and they would have conversations. And that's the whole thing, that conversation birth new seasons. And so you see these generations here today before you that these things have been modeled. So is it happening? Absolutely. However, we do have some people who are um, trailblazing, like their first generation born mm. in believers and Holy Spirit filled uh, ambassadors for the kingdom. I'm one of them. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like my mother didn't get baptized with the Holy Spirit until she was 40 years old. Okay. I was baptized with the Holy Spirit when I was 16 and I was not in a church building. I was in my bedroom Okay. Uh, on my floor. And so now I'm trailblazing and I'm breaking up some ground and, and teaching. And now my mother is actually teaching her mother, you know, mm. from, from all of our life lessons and things like that. And so we have these conversations. And so I think that it is happening. I do think also that there are some people who are really trailblazing and trying to do these things and, and, and start so that the next generation can be taught. So it is happening, but then again, um, in some areas or atmospheres, it's not happening. But also, I do believe because we are having these conversations and some things are caught rather than taught, people yeah. are picking up. Like Jesper said that um, the kids would kind of be peeping in the room, you know, listening. I've seen Eli in, in a class before, you know, <laughs> and, and interacting and stuff. And so that's good when you have them, you know, um, excited and enthusiastic and, and there's a desire that's that's the stirring up of the hunger so i think that it is happening and that's amazing to see that because that's what we want as um born again believers we want people to be desirous and hungry for something more than what they currently see in their current um you know atmosphere and, and environment amen and, and again conversations we've got to talk about it Silence is agreement, amen, and tolerance is acceptance, okay? And so we got to talk to our peers. Uh, uh, Charlotte, you're with the little people, and, you know, we've had this conversation, and, and you share with how sometimes you get a chance to talk to the moms. Sometimes they're receptive, sometimes they're not, amen, and you're just trying to help them uh, to create, because another thing we know and we come to learn that 50% of a child's dominant image is developed by the age of five years old. And 80%, this is how they think and feel about themselves. And 80% by the time they're age of 18. So 80% of the dominant image that they have of themselves is developed by the age of 18. Wow. Those are some critical and crucial years. And me being a pastor for the last 27 years, you don't know the people that we are ministering to. And we thank God for Jesus because Jesus came to make us whole. He came to heal us and deliver us and restore us from whatever has occurred in our lives that has come to oppress us and, 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 and distress us and whatever else has happened. OK, we can have wholeness again. But you don't you don't you you just can't even fathom the, the people that are now adults that are still have unhealed hurts and unresolved issues and unmet needs that have occurred to them in their childhood years. Amen. That ought to give us a clue. OK, I, I hear a lot of times let's talk about and Charlotte, I want to throw this over you. We talk about we want to give children everything because I didn't have all that I wanted when I was when I was young. But are we giving them what really matters? Are we giving them what has substance in them? You know, what what gives them substance? Um, so, Charlotte, just just kind of share some of the things you've shared about just having conversations and and your passion to see little young people, uh, little people as we mm -hmm. say, uh, 
you know, whole. Right. Well, it's good to see everybody again on this platform. I just want to thank God for just being able to be in the presence and um, just knowing um, that we do have a mandate upon us to tell our children about Jesus Christ. I think it's very necessary, but it is necessary for the parents to be on the same page. Mm. Parents are not on the same page. Some people are, they're wanting their children to come into coming to knowing Jesus Christ, but they're not wanting to put the effort and to teach them about Jesus Christ. And that's the only way you're going to be able to learn is through what your parents do. Um, and if they, if they're studying and showing themselves approved, you know, and, and reading the Bible in front of their children and trying to get them to learn Bible verses and stuff like that, that's a go. That's a good. And taking them to church and being with them and engaging them. But if they're not and they're just sending them to church, then that's going to pose a problem. Uh, we we went to church. We wanted to go to church. We had a desire uh, in us to go to church. And I know y'all think that I, I harp on this all the time, but you can't get what you get when you're in the presence of a body of believers at home on the couch. Amen. And, and, and with that, also knowing that it's important for parents to understand that even when you're sending them to church, please keep doing that. Mm -hmm. But you need to make sure that their environment at home matches what they're being taught when they are at church and they're with, with Sunday school teachers and they're with youth leaders and, and people that are trying to help you to nurture them and give them the biblical foundation they need for them to be successful in life. If you don't, as Charlotte said, if you don't back it up at home and you don't make sure that, 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 and, and I got to say this guys, don't get mad at me. I'm not, I'm not being uncles and aunties and, and different things are telling them something totally opposite of what you're trying to instill in them so that they can be, I have great character and have a quality of life and, and be a, a, uh, a asset to the community and not a liability. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah. Be mm -hmm. an asset and not a liability. They can be uh, a, an influencer that's influencing the other children uh, in ways that's going to give them wholesome environments to play in, to go to school in, to be able to go to the basketball game, the football game together in. Come on now, they're the ones that create that environment, amen. We know mm -hmm. we got the parents and the adults there that are trying to oversee it and make sure that it's done right, but it's the children that mess that environment up. It's not the adults, it's the children. And when it's not coming from the home, and it's not supported in the home, then that's why uh, we have these, these situations and circumstances that are going on amongst young people. Is that right? So mm -hmm. even keep sending them to church, but you need to come too. And you need Amen. to make sure that they're, they're, your home is going to model what you're learning, okay? What you're learning. And we all had to learn. We had to learn these things. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, amen, and you will enter into my rest, okay? And so we, we know, and, and, and listen, we're not here again throwing no stones. We're going we're gonna to learn and we're going to do better. And we're going to take responsibility for what society is looking like what our schools look like, what our community looks like. Listen, what my neighborhood looks like, mm -hmm. okay? Just because we're not living in the gated community doesn't mean that our community has to be labeled and titled with this and it doesn't have to be filled with crime. It doesn't have to be not a safe place. None of those things have to go on. It's the people that make up the community that causes the problems in the community. Y'all agree with that? Amen. 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 Uh, Bishop, I'll, I'll say this with that. And, and, and I want to, so much good stuff was said. And, and the thing that came up to me the most was, is that we are, we are so steadily to your point, trying to, again, dictate to our kids how to live instead of exemplify how to live. This is and good. I, about, I go back to, to what 
uh, Sister Charlotte was talking about, Sister Jazz, what they're doing is not trying to dictate the, how they should act in church. Right. But they're showing them how to be the church where they go. We all, we're only going to change the atmospheres yeah. by sending atmosphere changers into the environment. Mm -hmm. And that only happens, like you said, by taking the time to mm -hmm. self-examine and say, am I doing everything I can to turn my child, to turn my little one into a tone setter or into someone that will be influenced when they get out there? Because I can tell you from my own experience, I'm 39. And, I, and let me tell you something. I saw a lot of people that was going to church with me when I was a young man and and from from five all the way to 18 and we all went to college and let me tell you something there's there's more than church at college mm, you know yes sir. Uh, there's more than praise and worship service at college yes sir and, and i'm going to tell you what helped a a young minister trying to have an identity and still trying to be a little cool right it was what was said still didn't mean Yes, yep. sir. Because I couldn't go back to my home church every Sunday. No. Nope. I'm at school. I can't go back to Bible study every Sunday. So I got to, thankfully, there was something else packed in my suitcase besides clothes. Mm -hmm. There was the word of God. There, there were the lessons that I learned from my family and from my church. And, and I think that becomes step one is to make sure that we're packing in important knowledge and jewels into our children. And, and even our society, um, work is not going to change. There's going to always be someone at your job that tries you. That's not going to change. Uh, yes. Certain places are not going to change. You know, so the thing is, is that you have to remind yourself that you're also unmovable. You're also oh. like a tree planted by the water. There's, uh, I might can't change you, but you're not going to change me. All right. Because if I can't change you and you can't change me, but I'm still going to win because the person I serve changes everything. Mm. Yeah. They so you're, describe, you're describing character. Yes, right. sir. Okay. Absolutely. And what we've talked about this is that the character of any society will be dictated mm -hmm. by how it defines its virtues. Right. You were describing, I've got my virtues, how I'm going to think, how I'm going to behave the lines that are going to be drawn from what was instilled in me, which was the word of God, so that I know how to behave someplace other than church or if I was in praise and worship, if I'm amongst people that don't think the same way that I do and even behave the same way that I was taught to behave, but because I had some, some, some substance in me, which is the word of God, Mm -hmm. And it began to engrave the image of Christ in me. And so with that, I was able to function and navigate. Do young people still sometimes miss it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But they're also taught that they can repent. That's okay? right. And, and I know that there are some young people out here. When you hear a testimony of a young man that says he doesn't care anymore because all he's going to do, he, he's not going to, you know, he's going to die before the age of, of 21 or 25. And so he's out here just wilding out and doing whatever, whatever. Nobody ever taught him that he could repent. Sure, you've done some things and the enemy is telling me you can't be any more than what you currently are. So just, 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 you know, do it up or whatever it's going to be. The enemy's lying to them. That's why they got to hear the gospel. Amen. So you're talking about character, uh, right. Justin. That's what you're talking about. And that's why we got to make sure that it's happening in our children. And, and listen, not just our children, but in our adults. Okay, Absolutely. we got to have integrity. That's one of the virtues of Christ-like character is, okay. is, to, to, is to have integrity. Bishop, I, I, I've got to, I've got to be right there, and, and I know everyone is tired of hearing about it. I know I am as well. Um, uh, there was a little award show two weeks ago that happened, and somebody slapped somebody. And <laughs> what what bothered me was not the fact that someone who I don't know did something that I don't understand. And uh -huh. I want to make sure I preface that I don't know Will Smith. Right. None of us know Will Smith. The Fresh Prince of the Bel Air was a show. You don't know that man. 
Right. You don't know what he does behind closed doors. You don't know what he has got going on. You don't know Chris Rock. Right. You don't know that did, did he hold back because he has a spiritual intelligence or because he was counting his money. We don't know those things. Right. What, what, what bothered me, though, is how many of us, us, mm-hmm. were like, whoo, man, Chris is a good man. I, I don't know. I don't know. See, I feel that, again, I know we're getting down the road a little bit, but when you talk about character and integrity, I think the, the opportunities that we miss are when the world does something, we fall in line with how they view it. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think there should be something in an inclination that should always be an opportunity to give our perspective. You know, I'm I'm not really cool, Bishop. Uh, I, I have cool people like Stephanie that let me hang out with them at different times. <laughs> and and what I love about about this woman of God is is that there's no subject that mm-hmm. she's not going to find a way not to pound God in, but to sew God mm-hmm. into the fabric of the conversation. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've literally sat at a dinner table, but we've talked about everything, and this woman of God has found a way <laughs> to, to subtly let you know the God she serves. And, mm-hmm. and again, that speaks again to her character and to what she's made of. And, and I think uh, what we're kind of coming back around to is, is that um, who are we making? Are, are, are we making the next generation of individuals that, as Stephanie said, can get us back to that biblical passing of the torch yes. to where it becomes commonplace to know the word of God? It becomes commonplace to know scripture. It becomes commonplace to create atmospheres and conversations. I mean, I challenge anyone listening to, mm-hmm. to really think about it. When's the last time you heard a spiritual conversation spoken out loud in public? Yeah. When's the last time? Yeah, I, I think that become again. I, we're not asking everyone to change the world. Sometimes just change your conversation at your dinner table, and you right. may be amazed at the world you change. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. See, we got to love God, live for God everywhere that we go. It's called true worship and worship yeah. from Him in spirit and in truth. Jazz, I want I want you to speak to uh, again uh, Charlotte and myself. We have grown children. We're raising mm-hmm. grandchildren. Well, not raising them, but we're helping to raise grandchildren. Justin, you just begun on this path. You have a 19-month-old. Stephanie, you hadn't did that yet, but you assist in raising a lot of little ones. I've watched your hand in that. And then, but but Jazz, I want you to speak to because we're talking about integrity. And I want to read this comment by Bishop uh Calvin Rands before I move on to you, just uh uh Jasper. Bishop Calvin Ramsey said that the breakdown of the family structure has hurt our youth. Without the father, the young sons don't have an instructor and the young daughters don't have a protector. That's major. That's major. Come on, Bishop. Amen. All of these things we've got to talk about. We got, we can't be ashamed or afraid to talk about them. Okay. Uh, Jasper, I, I want you to speak to, uh, the fact you're 30 years old, you were a teen mom, yes, sir. you have a seven-year-old mm-hmm. son and a 14-year-old daughter, okay? Yes. So you got a teenager, come mm-hmm. on, and then you have a yeah. young man who who's seven years old who has a teenage sister, come on now. So, so, so a lot of dynamics can go on there. And I'm yeah. speaking to this because... Jasper is also a worship leader, okay? And I saw her in worship laying prostrate on her face. She don't just do that at the church. (laughs) I know she does that at home. You know why I know she does that at home? Because when you see her babies laying on their face. Come on. Come on now, modeling what they see at home. You can always tell what's going on at home when they act like what's going on at church is foreign to them. That's so good, Bishop. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 and so I just want you to speak to, I, I heard you mention last night, you speak to other parents that mm-hmm. are of your age and are raising children. Um, and, and so 
how is it or or why do you do that with your children? I know you can't help it, but just, just speak to that some. This is, a, a again, a 30-year-old mom with a 7-year-old and a 14-year-old. Yeah. So um, I, I do it with my kids because, you know, I personally have adopted the theology that I'm responsible for the people that they're going to become. Ah. I'm responsible for who they are today and I'm responsible for who they're going to be because when I'm dead and gone and in glory, they are still a representation of what I have done. Wow. So I take it. Prior, I make it priority to make sure that when they leave out of my house, they represent me and not just in the, you know, well manner, scared to do anything, scared to say anything manner, but in a way that's confident, um, in a way that's godly, in a way that's wholesome, and in a way that they can truly be themselves. So that's why I do it with my children. And as far as talking to other parents, um, I like talking to my peers because I realized even within myself, there were so many things that I had to unlearn to become the parent that my children needed and that this generation needed um, mm. from their parents. And a lot of times, you know, we just imitate what happened with us or what, you know, what we did as kids or what our parents, grandparents did with us. And a lot of times we don't take time to ask ourselves or even learn better and say, is that something that I want to continue? What benefit did that do for me? Like, what did that do for me? How did that um, grow me into the person that I am today? And so a lot of times I deal with parents that are my age because uh, in this world, we adopt a lot of uh, worldly theologies. We adopt a lot of worldly things. And um, Bishop, you mentioned one last night, securing that bag. You know, you have a lot of mothers that's like, look, you ain't got to do nothing for my baby. You ain't got to, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get mine. And it ain't nothing you can do. And so you have that theology. And my God, how damaged their children are. And, and I think I brought up an example last night where I, I met this uh, young mother and she had the ha most handsome little boy next to Eli. And um, I said, hi, how cutie, how old are you? And he was like, rawr. What? So, so he's not even, he don't even understand fundamentals, but he had a pair of $170 shoes on his feet. Okay. Wow. And so when you would encounter those things, I said, my God, like this is, this is horrible. <laughs> like this is the world that we live in. And these are the children that we are raising, mm -hmm. not training. These are the children that we're raising and that we hold our purse tighter to us when we see them walking down the street and we looking at them like, why they got a belt on, on their pants, but their pants start at their knees. Yeah. And those types of things that we see and that we don't understand, but it is the responsibility of that parent. And a lot of times parents, what I've realized in my conversations with parents, a lot of parents don't want to take accountability. Oh. A lot of parents don't want to uphold um, within themselves where they've missed the mark. Okay. They don't, they don't want to talk about where they missed it or what they don't know or what they didn't teach or what they didn't learn even when they were coming up. And so what happens is they blame the child. Okay. Opposed to getting in an environment for themselves where they too can learn as well as teach their children what they need to know in order to be who God has called them to be. And so a lot of parents don't take accountability. And when I have those conversations with parents, that's where I start. I always start at the accountability piece because it is so important as parents that we are not, we're not Hitler to our children. We just mm. don't tell them what to do. This is not a dictatorship. We don't just tell them what to do, but we model who they're supposed to be. And a lot of times you just have parents that just say, go do this, don't do this. You're supposed to do that. But you you have I've encountered so many teenage children and small children who's never heard their parents say, I'm sorry. Wow. 
They've never heard their their parents, their parents, That's the good. people who feed them, the people that clothe them, the people that keep a roof over their head. And a lot of times parents think that, that that's a gift for a child. No, you're supposed to provide for your children. They're yours. Come on. They're Ooh. yours. That is, that, that's not a gift for them to be fed. You're going to go to jail. Okay. If you don't feed your children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And so a lot of times people, uh, parents have this misconception of what it means to be a parent. But they've never one time apologized to their babies. I'm sorry. I've done that in, in my past. I have, you know, had a, a, a rough day at work. Maybe someone or some people, um, you know, really kind of got under my skin a little bit. And I brought it home to my babies. And when they call my name i may have said what in an aggressive tone and not in the yes love what can i do for you how can i serve you mm -hmm. and i had to go back to my children and i had to apologize and say mommy is so sorry i had a rough day at work and that is not your fault so let me apologize for the way that i just spoke to you and I feel like it unlocks something in a child when they see that, hey, if you as a parent always act like you got it all together, your children will never want to be vulnerable with you. Mm. That's powerful. That's absolutely As a parent, if you good. always act like, you know, if they never see you cry, if they never see you uh, tired, if they never see you being human, being a human being, make it, being a parent does not make you a superhuman. It doesn't. And a lot of times we don't want to be vulnerable with our children because there are some missing pockets and some holes within our hearts that we didn't get dealt with as children. So we don't want to inflict those on our children, but we don't want to, them to see what we did because we want them to be better than who we are. And then we create within our own minds a big ball of confusion. Mm -hmm. and then chaos and that's where the identity crisis come in i have been very transparent with my children about my mistakes about the things that happened to me as a child the things that i've gone through as a child and how i am so elated that as they are maturing and as that they're growing up that they've never encountered those same things yeah but they don't they wouldn't know that unless i was vulnerable enough with them to share with them what i've been through and what the mistakes that i made and the wrong decisions that i've done i don't act perfect for my kids because yeah. i want them to be able to come to me when they miss the mark and say mommy i messed up and i need your help we always want our kids to talk to us. We want them to talk. They don't ever talk to me. They become teenagers. I'm going to tell you something. My daughter, respectfully, is my best friend. Mm -hmm. She'll come to me and tell me about every boy that like her. She'll come to me and tell me and show me text messages. She'll come to me and talk about her friends and what they're not getting at home and, and what she wants to help them do. And if there is something that we can do to help her peers and stuff at school. And so I don't have that relationship, um, that mother daughter relationship, that stigma, especially that's on the African-American mother and daughter. Mm -hmm. I don't have that relationship. Our relationship is very airtight. We talk about everything. We do a lot of stuff together and she still respects me as her mother. Yeah. And and that But a lot of parents when I realize Yes, sir. A lot of parents just don't they don't want to take accountability and then they don't want to have that vulnerable conversation or those conversations with their children so when they do something so if if hypothetically their child um i've seen mothers who've had daughters who became teen moms and that daughter doesn't even know their mother was a teen mother she just had an abortion wow wow and so, so she's, she's mad at her daughter mm. yeah so she's mad at her daughter and, and she's allowing other people to label her, to judge her, and to put all of these things on her back when, wait a minute, that's supposed to be a protective thing because you did the same thing. And so you have to be honest and vulnerable so that they don't feel like they have to be superhuman and they don't have to be perfect in, in the name of pleasing you, but they know that ultimately the goal is to please God. That's excellent. So you're teaching them to be honest 
open and transparent. Yes. That's character. Once again, you're describing character. You're not teaching them because many times people put on masks in society. Hmm. They're pretending to be something that they're not because that's the environments that they enter in and out of. Okay, so you're teaching them to how to be wholesome, a wholesome, safe, honest, yes. open, transparent environment. And I heard you say this respectfully, because I've seen it go to the to the left too, where it's so open and transparent, where the child is disrespectful. Okay, and and they're transparent with what they're doing. But their transparency uh, is dishonorable in a way to where, right. you know, I'm, I'm going to do it and you make it okay for me to do it. People are doing all types of things in their parents' home. Are you understand what I'm saying? That, that's not the wholesome environment. You, right. you've, allowed the, you've allowed that to go to the left. Okay. Right. You've allowed that to go to the left. So, Thank you for, for sharing that with, with such yes, passion. Sir. And again, I want you guys that are listening that may ever hear this in the future. This is a mom that's in the in the heat of the battle right now. Okay. I want you to hear the wisdom. She's in the heat of the battle. This is what's happening now. Okay. Shaping and forming and real life experiences that she's applying the worshiper that she is that's what a true worshiper is able to do a true worshiper is able to be broken and honest and transparent because that's how you are with god that's right you can't you can't you can't take no garbage in the presence of god that's the truth yes Amen. sir bishop <clears throat> you come out of his presence cleansed and whole and and all of those great things and that's the power of worship we've got to talk about relationship with the father you know, you got some mm. parents, you got some adults, they don't know how to navigate life because they lack a relationship with the Father. And those of us that have relationship yes. with God, with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, we cannot be ashamed of this gospel. It is the power of God to our salvation. In the scriptures of Matthew 9, uh, 21, where, where it talks about, uh, if I could just but touch the hem of his garment, I could be made whole. That word hold is the same word for salvation. That I might be saved. Mm. Come on. We can't get around this thing. Money's not going to do it. Popularity is not going to do it. You cannot get away from a relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. And I know we've read the story, but did you look just a little bit further, a little bit deeper? Amen. Are you going to look at that 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 mom, that brother, that sister, that 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 father? Amen. And 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 can we create those spaces, guys, where we can have real healthy conversations? Healthy conversations, just you know, I mean, real conversation, nobody having to wear a mask, mm. you know, man, I blew it with my son the other day, you know, you know, can a brother come to you and say, man, I blew it with my son the other day. Right. You know, and, and man, I, I felt bad about that. You know, uh, I know you got a teenage boy. What did you do? And again, admitting it's stuff I don't know. <laughs> it's stuff Definitely. I don't know, you know. Yeah, I mean, come, come on, chat me in, guys. Come Bishop, on. I'll say this and get out of the way, and, and and that's such a powerful testimony. And and you know, um, I'll say this is that the it's relationship relate to the ship, mm -hmm. relate to the path that I'm on, relate to the journey that I'm on, relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and and we have got to, you know, start having those uncomfortable but necessary conversations, uh, uh, Bishop, because, you know, I, I, you know, I believe we're getting to a point where we have to start objectively and respectfully 
you know, saying things that may not be comfortable, but mm -hmm. that are necessary because uh, as we said earlier, yes, th there are individuals like Sister Jazz who are doing a phenomenal job. And um, I'll says, I'm excited to see who your children become because they're being rooted in something great and amazing and, and they haven't even broken out the ground yet. You know, uh, the, the fruit of what you're doing um, there, there are people that they have not even met yet who will come to know God because you plant a seed, you know, or what have you. Like, like that's, that, that's the capacity of what we're building. And, and I think we have to take a look at what, we, what we're risking versus the reward. And mm -hmm. yes, yeah. you, you may hurt my feelings and you may hurt some people's feelings, but, but you also may save my granddaughter. Come on. Mind you. My daughter is 19 months. Yeah. But you may save my granddaughter. Your yeah. daughter may save my granddaughter. Yeah. And, I, and so I have to start looking beyond the right now uncomfortability yeah. and see the greater glory that exists by, by, by doing the uncomfortable now. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love what you said about the fact that we have so many parents that are following the blueprint you know, that doesn't match up. And <laughs> I'm sorry, as I'm talking about children right on cue. <laughs> Here uh, she comes. <laughs> Put out the system. Come on. Yes, oh. hey. Carson. And, and so, you know, when I think about things that are uncomfortable, oh, she loves cameras. So Y'all can hang it up now. I see it. But she got her. a smile going on. <laughs> but as I think about what's important, right, I have to ask myself, is she worth getting corrected? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Is, is oh, she my. worth dealing with my issues? Is, mm. is, is she worth dealing with my daddy issues? The fact yes, that my sir. father wasn't around. The mm. fact that my father never sat out and talked to me. The fact that I've never had a scripture spoken to me by my father. Mm. Is she worth getting over that so that I can be the father I was called to be? My God, this is yes, a, he says something, Jasper. What we're called to be parents, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. I'm tired. I work a 50 hour week, but if this child cries, I'm coming. Come on, because she's my responsibility, she's my calling, and, and, and she's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so you know, again, I um, you know, I, I'm thankful for, for what you shared because at the root of it, that's the thing. Are we really willing to risk us yes. for them? Yeah. Whoever yes. them is. Are, are, you, are we yes. willing to risk me for they? And, yeah. and, and, and until we get more people willing to take off their mask, Bishop, and people to have those conversations and build those relate shunships mm -hmm. to go on journeys together, you know, th like that has to become the goal. Yeah. If, if another church doesn't get built, if another ministry doesn't get established, if another idealism doesn't be realized, can we build relationship within the kingdom we currently have? Yeah. Come so on. that we can plant for the kingdom to come. So yeah. again, I was just really moved by you, Sister Jasper. Again, just continue going where you're going. And, and I'm telling you, I have not seen, you have not heard, you know, and, and, and what you're doing is going to be generational. And, and I'll say this and I'll leave it alone. You know, when when we find obedience, right? And uh, someone mentioned Abraham earlier. Well, Abraham didn't start Abraham. He started with a different name, a right. different Abraham. job, and a different path. Mm -hmm. but, his, but his obedience led to being more than he ever thought he would be. Come so, on. Look, look, what you're risking ain't worth what you're about to gain. Yeah. That's good. Ooh. Come on, guys. We're about out of time. Stephanie, hit it. Charlotte, I want you to get your last words in here. Come on. You get you got 45 seconds. Hit it. 45 seconds. So I wanted to say that it was so powerful that you said to be vulnerable with your children. Really, some things will come by way of your repentance to your children. Oh, and so man. when you repent to your children for your mistake or for whatever, the lack of accountability, responsibility, they will begin to say exactly what you said. I don't have to put this wall up or put this mask on and pretend to be something that I'm not. Mm. 
Right. And so that's powerful. Have those conversations, be vulnerable, create that atmosphere where they can take those masks off and where they can be them themselves and they can learn who they are supposed to be. And that's really powerful. And I want to say this, that um, all of these things that you guys are talking about, the spirit of the Lord said this to me by way of Bishop Gerald that this is bigger than us. Stop taking it personal. This is about nations, visitations, and generations. Like yes. you said, her daughter can possibly save your granddaughter. And so this is bigger than us. And when you wrap your mind around that concept, you forget about what you got going on because now you're focused on Jesus and that's where you're supposed to be anyway. Y'all need to listen. Charlotte, 45 seconds. Come on. I just have to say glory to God. He's done it again. Thank you for having me. And Jasper, thank you for sharing with us. But it's the kids. To God be the glory. When we lift up the Lord, if God be lifted up, we'll draw all men unto him. And so I think we're on our way. You're on your way. You're there. And when you are able to worship and your children are watching you, that's training up the child. Yes. That's training the child up. Amen. And so let's share it. Listen, you guys are going to be able to share this. I believe that this can help a many. Those are going to hear it. Share it off of our Facebook page. Share with your family members and friends and everything. And we begin talking about this. When we talk about creating whole people, we mm -hmm. got to repent and we got to learn. We got to repent and learn. And if we'll repent, that's the beginning of the restoration process. And then we learn what we don't know. You don't know what you don't know until you just Discover what you don't know. Let's give our lives to Christ. Let's take mm -hmm. his yoke upon us and learn of him. And we can figure all of these things out. And let's share it with one another. Let's love each other enough, amen, to share what, we, what we've what we learned with others in a loving, kind way. And we're going we're gonna to continue to press forward and make all types of waves in this thing. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you all for being on. We got to go uh, until next week. But please share this with your family and friends. Amen. This is Life Lessons Live with the crew. God bless you.